Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we'll be doing the North Melbourne vs Port Adelaide game review a little bit late on this one as I wasn't able to get um, the recording done in time on uh, Sunday. So these uh, will be caught up I guess. Um, yeah, so Wednesday's content sort of hopefully it should be able to be caught up as um, this will be done on Monday then Tuesday we'll have also another three. Wednesday we'll have um, sort of what's it one plus yeah so there'll be it, it's going to be a lot of videos but hopefully we'll, we'll catch it up in time as i believe we have one more thursday game to go so if this was like next thursday i think we would have been able to catch up easily but i think it'll be a little bit more recording to get caught up but i mean i can just drop the cash cows as there is literally no cash cows this week so I could just drop that video, honestly, as um, there's nothing to basically record on that one. But anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into this video. So it, it, this recap is just basically how bad a North Melbourne... You know you're bad when Darcy Tucker is the best guy out there um, in terms of point scoring and just one that's collecting a lot, a lot of the ball. He shouldn't be collecting a lot of the ball, simple as that. Um, 33, 46, 36, 17. He was on 115 at three-quarter time. And honestly, could have easily... He was on 132 halfway through the last. He could have been on for 150, and that just shouldn't be the case. So, yeah, I just don't know what's going on with North Melbourne at the point at this point, given that Port basically smashed them with one inside mid, actually. Well, they had Berg... Uh, sorry, not Bergman... Um, Horn Francis, Rosie, and also Butters combined for 54 disposals. And they still won by 10 goals. Like, it is just so poor from North Melbourne at the point at this point. Sherry 120, he's been, yeah, really, really good this year. And honestly, I just cannot wait till next year starts just so that we can get, um, get a lot of these just refresh after what has been a dismal year. Um, Juan Francis won, uh, sorry not Juan Francis, Davis Jr., the other um, double barrel name. Um, he was great in the last quarter, kicked a goal and almost had another goal here as well, one uh, here. And then another kick mark and a tackle for another big point scoring move. Um, but yeah, he was uh, pretty good for a one fourteen, and he's been all right this year. He hasn't been game breaking, and that's just the thing about him. He always just seems to be a guy that's going to get a couple of low games in the sixties, a couple of one fifteens, one twenties, and end up around that ninety five every single year. He does it, and if and you're like next year we'll be like, oh, he's going to break out, but he never seems to be able to do it. Zach Fisher in the role that he's in is uh, just an a absolute juicy role. One twelve for him. Sheasel, um, 106 in the role that he had is pretty good. Uh, probably could have pushed on a little bit more, but second quarter he didn't really get anything um, to do. Uh, so we got only 18 in that quarter. Wardlaw had a huge last quarter from memory. Yeah, absolutely huge last quarter. But again, we, I was looking at it, um, his stats at three-quarter time almost and thinking he is just not going to break out. And then he ends up on an 83. So he's going to be a weird one. I just don't know whether he's going to take that next big, big leap in year three for him. I just don't know. Because he's probably going to end up, I would suspect, around an 80 or so um, next year for um, price cap. And he'd basically have to take that leap to 100. And I don't think he can do that when you can just rely on injury um, injury guys with discounts to jump up again. Because he's going to be around the same price, I believe, as like a Sam Doherty or something like that. And I am backing Doherty over Wardlaw. Tom Powell, 73. Um, he's just not really getting the job done. And so, yeah, he got a 73 and 8 in the third quarter. Uh, wasn't good. And then in the last quarter, got to 73 and then did nothing for the last five minutes. So, yeah, really poor from him. Um, McDonald, Curtis, Combin. Combin's a pretty actually good defender. It would just be interesting what they do there. He was on 54 at halftime and then nothing in the third and fourth. Corho, Zerha, Taylor, Stevenson, Pink, Dawson. You can just see the struggles. Just look at this bottom end because I can basically look at the North Melbourne list and you look down from about here downwards. Oopsie, didn't mean that. Um, you look down from about there onwards, and you genuinely think, what is there to gain out of this list here? Um, you got Combin, who's a good player, and then just looking at the list here, Nick Larky, and that's about it. Like, you got genuinely two players out of about half the list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you got 15 duds. That would be probably bottom six at most clubs. 
and they're all in the same lineup here. I, I think that just shows you a lot about what North Melbourne are doing and how they're just basically their top line guys. I mean, Tucker, you can add Tucker to this. He shouldn't be uh, sort of. It, it, it's just so poor their side at the moment, and it's going to be generationally poor. Like, they could ju- legitimately lose 23 games this year. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing much to talk about for North Melbourne's sake, honestly. They just need McKercher back. They need... Um, I don't even know if they have any major guys out injured, honestly, at the moment. Let me just check their injury list. I, I just don't think they have anyone. <laughs> it's just really poor North Melbourne. Um, let me just check this. North Melbourne injury list. Injury list. So they got Archer, who came back. Um, Miller Bergman, hamstring four weeks. He'd probably be better than Tucker, to be honest. Um, Callum Coleman-Jones, probably that second forward. He's out injured. Callum Dawson is available, didn't play. Then they got Braden George out. Josh Gota would probably come in for a Jackson Archer, honestly. And Hugh Grimm was out this week. Griffin Logue coming back soon. So they do have some guys on the bench. And then Colby McKercher post by And Jai Simkin as well. So they do have some guys there. But it's just not good enough, honestly, for a team. So they have still got a massive rebuild in front of them. Like, we've been saying it for three or four years now that they, they've got a rebuild in front of them. And they still got another three or four years, to be honest. They just have to play these young guys in Dawson Pink. Um, Dawson Pink, the other Dawson as well. Um, Combin, they just got to get games into them down back because they will eventually come good. But that'll be in three or four years' time. And that's why they should have picked these key defenders first rather than all the midfielders. And they probably could have fast-tracked their rebuild. And I know it sounds dumb, but if a team's going to go through a rebuild, they might as well... It almost is smart to trade out their uh, sort of first-round pick for multiple, multiple picks and just select key position players. If you do a whole, if you want to do a whole draft, like a whole refresh, you could honestly select three or four key position players and then just let them grow and develop um, and then pick the midfielders because then you start to get a team that is 24, 25, and they're all, or sorry, that when the key defenders are sort of 23, 24, that's when you start to really see that upward trend. Um, on, on to Port, Boak, I don't like his positioning, so I think that that 115 is very um, misleading, especially because they basically play Connor Rosie as a half forward. Ollie Wines, uh, 114, he was immense in the second quarter, and yeah, so it just shows that he's a good player. Um, but his injury history is just sort of making him go up and down in terms of average. I mean, he's had, I think, two injuries now um, this year, so he's missed games and then also sub- been subbed out of games. Uh, Marshall Byrne jones Burgoyne, Houston, a 92. He's been sort of inconsistent, and, yeah, 92 was all right. Um, Butters, Drew, Horn Francis, an 80. Just sort of shows he's an impact player and not really going to be ever fancy relevant, I don't think, especially if he doesn't have a forward tag, uh, forward status, sorry. Uh, Mead, Farrell, Radaglia, Sweet, a 66. It was just nothingness, honestly. He just, yeah, he got beaten in the ruck, but, I mean, it didn't matter that he got beaten in the ruck because um, that was about the only matchup that North won on the day. Um... And then you got McIntyre, Lear, Lear, Georgie Artis, Finlayson, Zerk Thatcher, Jones, Rosie. Um, now with what, and I did put a post about this, now with Rosie having played about four games through an injury cloud, he's basically automatically going to be seven to eight points under next year. So that'll be an interesting watch, um, especially if he plays another couple games as a forward, because that could generally put him 10 to 15 point unders just because he played out of position. So um, that's almost going to be added to the player watch for next year. And Burton, Bergman, and Rioli was subbed out early, but they have no fancy relevance. So that is basically the video there going through the North vs. Port Adelaide game. I don't really want to spend much longer on it because it was just a shocking game. And we knew the result after about, what, 10 minutes? Something like that, if that. I mean, North played all right until halftime and then just got smoked in the uh, third and fourth quarter, didn't they? Let me just see, does it have like a, a trend chart of what the scores were? Because I swear this was just um, this was just a smashing after halftime. I swear it was like 47 to 40-odd uh, at halftime. And then it was, um, it was 47 to 27 at halftime. And then um, in the second half, it was 9 goals, 6 to 3 goals, 3. So what's that? That's 60 points to 21. 
So yeah, they just won pretty much every quarter. Looking at that, yeah, they won every quarter. They were up in the last North Melbourne until um, they decided to give um, to gift uh, gift Port sort of two goals very very quickly. So yeah. Anyway, that pretty much is the um, video there going through the North vs Port game, and I'll see you guys for the next couple of videos uh, of re uh, of re reviews, I guess. So I'll see you guys then. Bye, guys.